Hi, this video is going to cover the ACT math topic of evaluating functions. We're quickly going to go over function notation and how to evaluate a function. And then we've got six ACT practice problems that we're going to solve and evaluate. Let's take a look. Okay, so in function notation, this is read f of x equals 3x plus 2. So we're not multiplying the f and the x. Usually when we have two things next to each other, we're multiplying two things together when they're next to each other. Uh, but f simply just names the function. And then x is the variable that we're putting into the function. So x is the input, f is the name. So we would take f of 5 and evaluate that. We would take our function, and then we would put 5 into the function. And then we would just evaluate that. So f of 5 becomes 15 plus 2. Combine those terms and we get f of 5 equals 17. So when we write it like that, it shows us what we put into the function, the 5, and what we get out of the function, which is a 17. Now we can also evaluate a function using an expression. So rather than putting a number into a function, we can actually put an expression into a function. So we wanted to calculate f of x plus 4 then we would take the function and we would put x plus 4 into the function for x. Now notice I put parentheses around it. It's usually best to put parentheses around it because that takes the place of x. So the whole x plus 4 takes place of the x. So we're going to have to multiply the 3 by the x and by the 4 using distribution there. So that'll get us 3x plus 12 plus 2 when we do distribution. Then we combine the 12 and the 2. And we get f of x plus 4 equals 3x plus 14. So now let's take a look at a composite function. So if we have two functions, one is named f and one is named g, uh, f of x is 2x plus 3, g of x is 4x. And if I was to ask you to find the f of g of 2. So this is a composite function. We first have to, we work on the inside out. So we first have to find g of 2 in order to do this. So g of 2, we take the function g, which is 4x, and we put 2 into it. And then 2 times 4 just gets us 8. So that's just the inside part, the g of 2. So g of 2 equals 8. So now, if we take the f of g of 2, now that we've calculated that g of 2 equals 8, we can take and we can put 8 into that function. And then we just simplify the math. 8 times 2 is 16. 16 plus 3 gets us the 19. So that's how we would do a composite function. So I've got six problems picked out from the ACT practice test that have to do with evaluating functions. So let's take a look at the first one. First one's pretty straightforward. Uh, f of x equals 3x plus 7 squared. What's the f of 1? So we're just going to take and put 1 in to this function. So f of 1 is going to be 3 times 1 plus 7 and that whole thing oops, squared. Whole thing squared. Make sure we do order of operations. So make sure we do inside the parentheses first. So this is going to equal 3 plus 7 inside the parentheses squared, which is going to be 10 squared or 100. And the answer for this one's going to be E. Now sometimes on functions you've got the variable shows up twice. We just have to put that variable into both of the places where x shows up. So h of negative 3 is going to be 4 times negative 3 squared. I always put whatever I'm putting in, I put in parentheses to make sure that that negative is included in there. And on later ones, when we see when we're putting a whole expression in, it's that whole thing that's replaced for x. So I like to put parentheses around it just so I don't get confused. Same thing here, negative 3. And then we can evaluate this a little easier. So negative 3 squared is going to be 9. So that's going to be 4 times 9. Negative 5 times negative 3 is positive 
15. Do multiplication first, get 36. Add these two together and we get 51. All right, on the third problem here, we have a condition. So this is a conditional function. All this means is whatever we're putting in, we've got to check this condition first. So if we're putting in a number that's greater than zero, we're going to use this first function. If we want have something going in that's in less than zero, then we put this in. So negative one falls into the second category. It's less than zero, so we're going to use the second function. And we're going to put in negative one for all instances of x. So we're going to get negative one to the fifth is the negative out front, plus negative one to the fourth, plus 36 times negative one, minus 36. So we've got to be very careful with signs here. So negative one to an odd power is going to be negative one. Negative one to an even power is going to be positive one. 36 times negative 36 is minus 36 and then a minus 36 at the end. So negative negative one is gonna be plus one. So we have a plus one, plus one, a minus 36, and a minus 36. And if we put those all together, we get minus 70, or A as our answer here. So functions on the ACT, you'll also occasionally see these kind of special symbols come up. They'll use all kinds of different shapes and symbols. All this means is they're defining this diamond to mean that for A, B, C, and D in this format, that it's going to equal this. So all we have to do is take A, B, C, and D and put it into this equation, right? So A, B, C and D. So A is going to be 2, B is going to be 1, C is going to be 3, D is going to be 4, and we just need to put it into this equation. So A times C is going to be 2 times 3, B times D is going to be 1 times 4, and then the denominator we've got A times B, that's going to be 2 times 1, minus C times D, which is 3 times 4. So all we did is took the a, B, C, and D, and put it into this equation. And then 2 times 3 is 6. 4 times 1 is 4. We're doing the multiplication first by order of operations. 2 minus 12. That gets us 10 over minus 10, which gets us negative 1, or B is the answer. Okay, on this one we're doing, um, we have composite functions, so we've got g of a half and then f of g of a half. So we've got to do the inside first, so we've got to do g of one half first. So we're going to put one half into this function, so g of one half is one over one half. Now one over one half um, one over something just means the reciprocal, means you're going to flip it over and get two. Another way you can look at that is one divided by one half is the same as one times two over one. Either way, we're going to get that the g of a half equals two. So then this whole thing here becomes two, and now we're looking for f of two. So what we worked on the inside, got g of a half equals two. Now we've got to figure out f of two. So now that goes into the function f. So f of two is gonna get us two minus one over two. I just put in two for each occurrence of x here and here. Two minus a half is one and a half or three halves, and our answer is k. All right, and for our final problem, we have a composite function again, but we don't have a number going in, we have the whole function going in. So g of x can be replaced with x squared minus 2. So this becomes f of x squared minus 2. We replace the g of x with the x squared minus 2. 
and then we're going to put that into this function. So the f of x squared minus 2 is going to be 4 times x squared minus 2. And again, put it in parentheses so we know we're multiplying the 4 not just by the x squared, but we're also going to multiply the 4 by the negative 2. And now we can simplify this. 4 times x squared gets us our 4x squared. 4 times negative 2 gets us our negative 8. And this is just by itself, not being multiplied by anything, plus 1. Combine our like terms, and we get 4x squared minus 7, which is answer H. Thanks for watching. If you have an ACT test coming up, good luck with it. Um, if you're new here and you'd like to subscribe, you can do so right over here. I've got other suggestions of videos for you to watch right here. Uh, please comment below on things that you liked about the videos or ways that I can improve it. And thanks for watching and come back again soon.